I'm going to talk to you about something not very international, which is surprising because this is not just Nordic lab talk, this is international lab talk. I'm going to talk to you about a Danish initiative that... Ah, haha. A Danish initiative, a feminist initiative called the Girls in Armour Movement, um, which was... Um, which started as a regiment of all women made for a Danish lab called War Lab, um, which went to be an official organization um, with members of both sexes and is now some sort of loose network supports this system for people who are interested in, um, in uh, feminism and women's rights. Um, ah, I don't know the right. So, yeah, what's up with the name Girls in Armor? It's, um, it's a really stupid name, we know. Um, it started up as a joke or a pun over uh, an, old, <laughs> an old Danish movie about women enrolling themselves in the army. It was from the 70s. Uh, we, uh, we bitter regretted uh, giving uh, the group the name then, but it's sort of stuck and uh, now it has nostalgic value. Um, this is me. Um, so now I was going to come with an introduction, but I already did that. Um, and I'm going to say that uh, I'm really terrible at making this sort of presentation, not giving the presentation, but actually making what's on the screen. Um, so now I just have pictures of us one running around in lab gear. <laughs> War Lab is a series of Danish labs which focuses on battles, epicness, soldier lives, and badass costumes. It's not very complicated. It has about 500 participants every time. It runs once a year with a different organizing group, um, and it's about three days. In 2009, when we began this initiative, there weren't really that many women around to play these games. They were usually, I'm the musician, I'm the one who carries the standard, I'm at home making food. Um, if there were women participating in regiments, there were usually just one per regiment. And a regiment is like 10 to 30, maybe 40 people for the, bigot, for the largest of them. So not many women were around to play these games. So one night, we sat down a bunch of women. We had um, smoked a lot of cigarettes and uh, we had drunk a lot of red wine. And someone said, we'll do a group of only women. And everybody said, yeah! And the game was on. So now we, we said it and we had to do it. So the whole project sort of started for our own sake. Usually when you make this kind of feminist uh, initiative, it starts with people reading a bunch of feminist theory. I know because I read a bunch of feminist theory all the time. Um, but we, none of us really knew anything about feminist theory and how to be like a proper feminist activist, activist group. We did this for our own sake. We did it because we thought, wall up, that sounds like fun. Some had been, some had not. So we we're kind of like, we're going the whole way. With wall up, we kind of wanted to challenge how, women's, how women were portrayed in, uh, in these kind of LARPs. And, when you use like super regular stereotypes with women, like you go and cook and I go and fight. We wanted to challenge that. We also wanted to make a team where no one felt like the weak link. If you're one woman in a group of 10 men and you have to be very physical and you have to when you play wall up, there's a lot of running around and fighting and getting hit in heads with sword and axes. Um, and you kind of tend to feel like the weak link and having a group of women, all women, doing this, then nobody felt like the weakling. So it was kind of like an act of empowerment. So, and, and we wanted to, um, to shun our male friends. They were laughing a little bit at us. And we wanted to prove that we could do this. We could also organize this whole shebang. And yeah, so we did. And most importantly, we wanted to show that we could function as a regiment as well as anybody. So we found about 17 women who wanted to participate with us. We uh, fundraised, fundraised 4,000 euros to make costumes that fit women's bodies. Um, and we made a ton of costume. At one point, I actually had a dream of being a sewing machine. <laughs> so 
So we had character workshop and training days. And at the game, we were awesome. We won battles, not all, but a proper amount. And we had got praise from all the other wall lab participants and organizers. So when we came home, we had success and felt pride. So what was wrong? Well, we discovered something that went that so that we went from being just a bunch of women running around and playing wall up to being an actual feminist group. And that was that in the duration of the lab, we were treated so much more differently because we were women. And in wall up, gender doesn't really matter. It's a game about yeah, being in the Warhammer fiction, and then you fight uh, the other army, and then you go back, and then you say, yay, we lost, or yay, we won, and then you go out and fight some more. It's not a deep game. It's not a deep emotional game, and, and gender isn't an issue. So why was it that we had random soldiers coming up to us and asking, hey, hey, I have a son at home. Could, could you maybe marry him? Um, and people were asking, oh, but why are you in this war? And I would look at him and say, but why are you in this war? Maybe because we both signed up for the same LARP. And, <laughs> and at some point, um, another, another regiment made us a homemade wooden dildo because that's probably the sort of thing you miss. Yeah, great. So having your gender being an issue or being something that the other players responded to constantly and all the time was kind of really fucking annoying when you're playing a game where gender doesn't really matter. So we came home with a dream. We wanted to, um, we wanted to make uh, the wall up more accessible to women. We wanted to talk and debate women's role in these kinds of lab. And we wanted to ask simple questions like, when you have a fantasy fiction, when does gender matter? What's important? When is it important and when is it not? Uh. So the initiative evolved quite, uh, quite a lot from there. We became an official organization with members and we had SPOT and uh, the Bifrost board and stuff like that. We wrote a bunch of articles, we debated a lot, we <laughs> made a ton of debate on Facebook and social media. We also sadly did a lot of shitstorms, which I'm not really proud of, but yeah, you, I'll tell you about all the mistakes we made later. This is not the time. Um, we went to some more wall apps and looked epic. And, uh, and most importantly, uh, we talked. We talked to a lot of people and not on the website. Um, having your like platform with this kind of lab for 500 people, mostly men, it gives you a lot of people to talk to and a lot of them don't agree with you, but we made, we made an issue out of it to try to be polite. These people, they were not evil, they were not vicious, they just didn't understand what's it like, what is, how it's like to have your gender used against you in a lab where gender is clearly uh, not the point. And we tried to give credit and support to other women, women which we did not know because, well, we felt that that was important and that was kind of like the whole empowerment thing. So apparently something worked. We got a bunch of more allies, um, people stepping forward and saying, hey, I agree with you and I will take this fight which was great because we, have never, we would never be able to do this if we didn't have a bunch of allies, both men and women. So, and we could see that slowly people were beginning to talk a lot more about gender in wall lab, but also in other kinds of lab. We had organizers call us or write us and asking, hey, how do I make this game more accessible to women? So, and we got in touch with a bunch of other badass women who have had the same struggle and we bonded with them, and we learned from them. Sorry, this is um, probably not the best system, but this is the last page I have. So then it got wider than just war lab and fantasy games. Many of us become real feminists, not, not just lab feminists, I know there's no such thing, but 
for me personally, it became a way of, um, of looking at society and how it's structured and how it functions. We also begin to reflect a lot about what are women's roles off game as organizers, as playmakers, as scenario writers, all that bunch of stuff. And obviously there were a lot of women before us who made all these things and were all these things, but they were scattered and I thought that they were hard to reach. So, so we kind of began to reflect, how, how, how can I be in that position? How can I be a lab organizer or a scenario writer or all this stuff? And we began to push each other and to encourage each other to stand up and to claim that fame and to do that project. And we slowly, we closed down like the official part of the organization and became more like a network which supported each other and was, I'm not sure whether I should do this thing. Yeah, you go in and then you do that thing and we support you and we believe in you. And that is probably one of the most important things to come out of this initiative. So today, it's been six years since we made the first Girls in Armor project. And today we have been main organizers at the Danish Convention Festival Forum and main organizers at Knudepunk. People have been making tons of laps. Um, people have been scenario writers at Forum, Festival and Grenzelandel. People have been sitting in boards in various organizations. And I'm not and I'm talking about all the women who have somehow been a part of or affiliated with the Girls in Armour movement. So we really, really evolved ourselves in this process. And hopefully we pulled a lot of other women to, uh, with us up because we're going onwards and forwards. Network is the thing I want to... If I had to sum up the Girls in Armour movement with one word, it would be network. It's that support system. It is that understanding of the other person's struggle. Being sort of marginalized as a woman in Danish lab because there aren't so many, I can see that it's changing now. There are so many more visible women doing so much more awesome stuff. I'm not saying that we did it, but I'm saying that we maybe did some of it. Maybe we encouraged something, someone, I hope so, but we definitely made an effort to change how women are perceived and how women are involved in the Danish lab. Thank you. <laughs>